As a livestock farmer, it is advisable for you to allow your livestock to go out and graze randomly, or is it better for you to confine them at a specific place and feed them directly? I know this is a topic that is all over the internet, especially with modern livestock farmers, thinking about what is the best way for me to be efficient and productive with my livestock farming. And that's why with our experience over the years, we are bringing you this episode, whether it's more profitable or efficient for you to keep your livestock confined, or it is much better for you to actually allow them to graze randomly. So stay tuned if this is a topic that you would like to hear more of. Welcome back guys and once again welcome to Farming in Africa. As usual my name is Fred and today we are discussing is confining your animals in a space like this and feeding them directly the most efficient way to rear livestock or is opening them up to go out and actually graze whether being random grazing or confined grazing the best way and we want to share our experience with you over the years but before we do that i want to direct you guys to our website where we've put together a lot of resources for you guys to download and learn so if you're interested go to www farminginafrica.com slash resources and download any free resources that we, my team and myself have put together to help you guys, especially around livestock farming. But today that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about intensive, semi-intensive farming and random grazing. And I know it is the new trend on the blog. A lot of um, YouTube videos out there telling you to confine them I personally has been an advocate of intensive farming and therefore today I want us to spend more time talking about this particular topic and seeing if it is most effective to do that or not. So the first one that I want us to look at is field grazing. So come along with me um, and I want to use our farm as sort of the props for this. So we're talking about field grazing. What does it mean to do field grazing? So field grazing simply means allowing your light animals to actually graze is in either an open area or in a confined area. So if you look at what, how we have structured our farm here, basically if you look at the last pen, so we've divided our pens into about eight. If you look at the last pen, which is where I'm taking you to, we have the West African dwarf goats, which are the local goats that we have here. If you're in East Africa, we don't have the Mubendes, all what we have is the West African goat. So that, that's what we have here. So if you look at what we are doing with them, they are actually grazing. So all these goats that you're gonna see are pregnant goats and they are pregnant goats that we actually have put them in brachyrial grass to feed, right? They are here 24 seven just feeding and they are doing open grazing. But as you can see, we have also fenced that open grazing. So it is actually in a confined area. Right, so that is what I mean by sort of field grazing. I know the other option, which is common to most people, is also the random grazing, which where your animals go out to graze, but not in a confined area. And that's what we are mostly used to. So most of you that have goats uh, and doing it at, at a very small scale, you probably release them in the morning and they walk around and survive by themselves. Those of you doing cattle farming, also will let your cattle go out and they graze. There are pros and cons to that and, to, and I want us to take a look at some of the pros and some of the cons of uh, field grazing. So looking at the pros, obviously the first one or the reason why most people actually do it is because of cost. It's very cheap, right? So if your animals are walking around and just grazing, you do not bear any cost in terms of feeding. So it's cheap. Um, number two, animals get to exercise a lot, which could be bad or good, but as we are looking at the pros, they get to exercise a lot as compared to if you don't have enough land and you are actually confining them. The last one, which is a pro, is also minimum use of labor. As you guys know, labor in our part of the world for this kind of job is very hard to get. And therefore, sometimes it can be the biggest thing that could actually collapse your business. As I've shared a lot of experience with you on what has actually happened here at our farms, um, you know, most people will choose the easy way. It's cheaper, 
you know, um, they get to exercise and you don't have to spend a lot on labor. You get, you know, a full any herdsman or any herdsman that can take care of whether you're goat or cow and it's just one person, right? So that makes it very cheap and easy for people and that's why that has been most of the options that we have. Moving on to the cons. One of the cons is as your animals are grazing outside and something that I have experienced when I started first was getting bitten by snake, scorpion and other dangerous reptiles that are actually out there, right? So they are grazing in the bush, they are grazing wherever um, they are. Even if you're doing goats and they are in the town, right? Somebody can hit them, somebody can steal them. But if you're doing cattle and they are just grazing in the forest, then you are exposed to um, getting bitten by a snake or scorpion and that could cost you a lot of money as well. Imagine losing one cow, you know, just by a snake bite or even by a scorpion sting or whatever the cost might be. Or even being stolen, which could be um, a big damage to you. Another con that has actually affected me personally is eating dangerous plants. I've always thought that animals are selective on what they eat, but I've also realized that it has cost me a lot by my animal just eating a plant that they weren't supposed to eat, right? Or even eating an insect, a, a, a worm on a plant early in the morning that they weren't supposed to eat. And that has cost a lot of money um, and damage to some of my livestock. Also, now as you guys know, there's a lot of, um, you know, insecticides and weed control, weed size that are available. You never know where your animals are grazing if they are roaming randomly, right? The farmer or the neighbor, they might have decided to actually, um, you know, spray their, their weed, but your animals will go and eat it. And if that spray had occurred, you know, a few days before your animals graze, then you're gonna have issues with that. So that is also a con number two. Number three is risk of leaving your animals behind. There've been times where, you know, previously my livestock have gone out and they came back and one is not around. They came back and they are short of three, especially the male. The male might sense or smell another female somewhere and will decide to branch. If you have 50, 100 cows, the full any headman cannot keep track of all of them. These guys don't even count them. So then that becomes a problem. And that has happened to me a couple of times as well. Another huge con in, in random grazing or open field grazing is actually maximizing the feed that they've had. Most of our cattle ranchers will actually walk hours, hours to the forest to actually feed and then walk hours back. When that happens, all the food that they eat, they also exercise in, right? So what does that do? That means that they lose a lot of energy. Access to water is also a huge thing. Because they are walking a lot, they need to drink. And if there's no water body around and they're just walking and walking, then again, you know, that, help, that doesn't help them in their growth. So walking too much doesn't really help. And this could be a huge effect. So you can decide to do open grazing, but what my recommendation would be is to do confined open grazing, just like what we have done here. I'm gonna move on to zero grazing. Zero grazing is a livestock farming system where fresh grass is cut and brought to um, livestock animals. This system actually allows farmers to design their own feeding plan and be able to feed their livestock based on what is required at various stages, right? So zero grazing. So what we do here is semi-intensive. I would say it's a blend of confined grazing and zero grazing, depending on what stage that they are. So what are some of the pros of zero grazing? More consistent quality grass. So what we do is we know what our animals are feeding on. Right, so here we are always making sure that we are either feeding them with hay or we are feeding them with corn or wheat brown or alfalfa. So we have very, we are aware of what we are feeding our animals basically, right? So that is a huge importance into your animal growth. We are also able to control what the animals eat. So if it's a lactating mom and they are grazing, you don't have control over what they eat. Right, but if you are doing zero grazing, you're able to make their food more richer, different from your bucks, you know, and also for your um, kids, depending on what stage that they are, are you able to control that feed, which I think is a very important piece of livestock railing. 
Another important pro to us is also the fact that we are able to control our pasture. So in Ghana and everywhere, basically, it's very hard to get land and land is also expensive depending on where you're buying it. So for example, if we have five acres of brachyria grass and we allow all our goats to go there and graze at a time, that brachyria grass is not going to last them maybe for three months, right? But if we decide to harvest it, store it, harvest it, store it and feed it to them as hay, one, they get enough protein, which is from the dry hay. And second, we are able to maximize that five acres that we have as compared to somebody who will allow them to graze. As I showed you in the past, the guys that are actually grazing in a confined area because they are pregnant. And that's why we've exposed them to food 24 seven, right? But most of the time, what we do is we harvest and then we feed, which is able to maximize um, the grass that we have or our feed source. I don't know what you have, but whatever you have, I believe you agree with me that harvesting and feeding is more efficient than day grazing on. Unless you have abandoned land or you have a good size of land with small flocks. And that, that's when I recommend that to you. The last pro that I'll give to you guys is also the fact that the animals are less exposed to danger, hazard. We talk about the cons from um, random grazing, which is basically getting exposed to, you know, snakes, scorpions and so on. If they are confined, whether in, you know, in a net space like this or in a cage, what happens is that you, they are much more protected. Of course, harm can always happen, but they are much more protected or you are more you have the ability to control it better, right? So you are protected from certain things that you can prevent, but cannot even anticipate when they are randomly grazing. So that is um, the last pro. Let's move on to the cons of having your animal at a zero grazing yard. So what are some of the disadvantages or cons in having your animals um, being reared in zero grazing system? Number one is labor intensive. If you haven't really built your pen in a way where you know you have automated your drinkers and feeders, which mostly is not done for livestock farming, then know that you're gonna require a lot of manpower to be able to maintain it to that level. Talking about cleaning, talking about um, feeding and feeding them with water and food, talking about um, you know preparing their food, all these things is going to need people to support you. So it's very labor intensive and therefore comes with, you know, spending money as compared to open field grazing where you actually don't have to do any of these things um, at some point. The second um, con to that is also when we talk about preparing their food and harvesting, that means that you need equipment. You guys have seen the amounts that I've invested into buying a tractor, buying, you know, baler, buying a rake, buying a drum mower and all these things to be able to prepare their food. So that could be also oh, a huge cost um, in terms of equipment, labor, again, combined that you have to consider if you want to do zero grazing. The, the, final, the final disadvantage is consistency with your feeding, right? If you're doing zero grazing, that means that throughout the year, you need to make sure that you have food. So better planning needs to go into it. First of all, how many livestock do you have and how much food do they consume every month, every week, so that you're able to multiply that and know how much food you will need in the course of the year. Because you can do zero grazing and say in the dry season, I don't have food. As you guys know, that happened to me in my cattle farm where at some point my farm got burned and then I didn't have food. And what happened is I had to divide them, right? And try different system, um, which I wasn't very pleased with because that wasn't my plan. Right, so if you're gonna do zero grazing, consistency of food is very important. So in a nutshell, I think zero grazing is good, but it's just gonna cost you. What would be my recommendation? My recommendation would be better planning. Plant your feed, whether it be in alfalfa, brachyria grass, bermuda grass, whatever feeding system that you have, make sure that you have feed. If you wanna plant corn, plant corn, store it. And then based on that, do your calculation. How many animals, goats, cows, or pigs do I want to start with based on the food source or the amount of food that I have. 
once you have done that then you can now go into purchasing your lifestyle and come in and do a better zero grazing because trust me if you really want to succeed and from what i have experienced from cattle to goats zero grazing is the best way but also blending it with a confined grazing so that you can minimize your risk and have much yield from your production right because you want to control it's like having a child and not knowing where the child is eating or where he's playing right you get a lot of influence and things that is beyond you the parent your control and that's the same way i see my livestock for us to be able to know what they are eating at each stage help in their growth and help in their i guess our profit or return on what we've invested into them as well so let me know what you guys think but this is what we're doing and i hope this video is helpful for you today or will be for you tomorrow once you're ready to go into your livestock farming thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you again in the next video